Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Ken. Thank y'all for coming back for yet another video. I hope y'all enjoyed that preview video that we did before the Asher review. I know I really enjoyed shooting it. So if you hadn't noticed, today's video is going to be about the Yi 4K action camera. Now this particular action camera came out back in 2015, maybe 2016. It was compared to the GoPro Hero 5 or the GoPro Hero 6 when the Asher came out. Now to me, it's always good to go back and look at old technology and compare it to today's technology, particularly these particular action cameras. Now the Yi 4K is not going to have the E4K Plus, I should say, is not going to have the hyper smooth like the GoPro has today, but it still is a really good action camera. Now, for those of you who love to shoot in different resolutions, this is the action camera for you. This particular action camera shoots in so many different resolutions that you know you probably can spend a whole day shooting with this particular action camera. Now, to me, this particular action camera is still a good value. However, it's, it's definitely a little bit higher than those action cameras we've seen on this particular channel. I know when I was looking to purchase a U 4K uh, action camera, this U 4K Plus, I should say, it was hovering around $160 to $245. So I was able to get this action camera on loan to shoot some videos and do some comparison videos that's going to come later with the U 4K Plus action camera. So before we get into the positive and the negative about these action cameras, let's go and see some videos I shot earlier with the E 4K action camera, and then we're gonna come back. All right, guys. So this is a audio test from the front of the camera. I'm currently recording at 4K at 30 frames per second. Again, this is an audio test on the E 4K. Audio test one, two, three, four. All right, guys. So this is an audio test from behind the camera. It's currently recording at 4K 30 frames per second. Audio test 1, 2, 3, 4. 30. Stabilization is on. Do a little quick pan. All right, guys, so this is 4K 30, the stabilization on. All right, guys, this is 2.7 to 30 frames per second. Stabilization is on. Quit paying around. Let's see if we see any sun flares in the camera. All right. So that's 2.7 at 30 frames per second. Stabilization on. All right, guys. So this is the 1440 frames per second. Um, you notice when you look at this frame, there's the little black bars on the side, but I thought I'd show it to you anyways because this camera shoots so many different frames per frame rate. So this is 1440 with stabilization on, 30 frames per second. All right, guys, so this is 1440 with black bars on the side and stabilization on the side. Oh. All right, guys, so this is 1080p at 60 frames per second with stabilization on. Shaking a little bit. See, I want to know if you guys can tell going up a hill. Again, this is, four, this is 1080p with 60 frames per second. Trying to get a little color in.
Check out the dynamic range, field of view. All right guys, so this is 1080p at 30 frames per second with stabilization on. So I want you to focus out there, see all that dynamic range, see all of the uh, things in the, out there, see if you can make that out. All right, guys, so this is 1080p, 30 frames per second. Let me know what you guys think about this action camera in 2020. That's it. All right, guys, so let's talk about something positive about this particular action camera. Right off the bat, you got to talk about the audio quality. The audio quality coming out of this Yi 4K Plus action camera, for it to be a four or five year old action camera, is amazing. Actually, the audio quality is better than some of the action cameras that we've seen on this particular channel. And I'm even talking about the, the, uh, the V50X. So the audio quality is really good. So another positive about this particular action camera is the battery life. You can shoot 4K in this particular uh, with this particular action camera for almost an hour in the 4K setting with this one battery. So that's really good. It's better. It's actually better than all of the action cameras that I've seen on particular playing with on this particular channel. Um, so yeah, the battery quality on this action camera on the E 4K Plus is great. Also, the colors coming out of this action camera is really good. I do like that. I like the fact they have one button that controls everything in the LCD screen. The touch screen is great as well. Uh, so it's actually better than some of the action cameras that we've seen on this particular channel. So let's talk about some of the negative about the particular action camera. One negative about it, it does not have the newer resolution, which is the H265. So it's shooting everything coming in is H264. So yeah, it doesn't have that new resolution, which is really good, or that new uh, recording, which is really good. But uh, it's H264 is still great. Still, people still use it today. Uh, and I know H265 is the newer resolution that people shoot in, but you know, hey, it's you know it, it is what it is another negative about the particular action camera is the fact that where the battery is located is also where your sd card goes i'm going to show that to you here and i don't have my sd card in it but if you pull the battery out of it the sd card goes right there particularly with your battery and you can see you have your your tripod screw, uh, screw mount right here so if you need to take this off of a tripod or let's just say you're trying to get your sd card you, you done shoot it with one sd card you want to put another one in you have to take the battery out or take the sd card out in order to, in order to get to it and if you have on a tripod you actually have to take the whole thing off in order to get to that particular department right there so that's a negative about that you know, you know, some people may think you know, I can deal with that, but to me, that is a negative about it. It does have that plastic feel to it, but it's a little heavy. So it's definitely more heavy than some of the other action cameras that we've seen on this particular channel. Uh, and the last thing is the price. Now, the price to me is the one thing that really would keep a lot of people away. It hadn't dropped that much since this action camera been released. So it dropped some, but it really hadn't dropped that much. The price still hovering around $165 to that $240, $250 range for it to be a five-year-old action camera. Now, it's definitely not GoPro price, but it's definitely more than what, you know, some of these budget action cameras that's out here now, they can do a lot more things or some of the same things that come in at $99 to $120. So, the price need to come down a little bit more. I do think so. Um, and again, it's not GoPro. And again, one other negative about the action camera, it does not have the stabilization that GoPro has, or even the, the a Castle V50X, because you know they have newer technology with the newer action camera. This is a five-year-old action camera, so we're not gonna have that type of technology in this particular action camera. But it is still good. It still does a lot of the things that you would want an action camera to do. And again, the colors are amazing coming out of this particular action camera. As you've seen in the time lapse, I like this is the, the time lapse video was probably the best time lapse I played with from an action camera. And I'm talking about I played with the GoPro, 
uh, Acaso, uh, and I'm playing right now. I'm, I'm working with the DJ Osmo, but this one right now is probably the best I've seen coming out of an action camera right now. Keep in mind, this is five years old, so it is what it is. I do think this is a really good action camera. I do think the price is going to keep a lot of people away if they decide to look for an action camera other than the cheaper ones like the Castle V50X. If you want that middle range, this is a really good action camera to go for. If you want that middle range, you don't want to go for a cheaper version like the go like the Castle V50X, but you definitely want to spend the money like a GoPro or DJ Osmo. So this is that middle range between the two, and it's still really good. And keep in mind, this is four or five years old, and it's still pretty good. So, all right, guys, this is going to do it for me. I really do appreciate y'all for joining me. Don't forget to hit that bell for notifications. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and do all that good stuff. And check out all the show notes and stuff I have listed down below for you. I really would appreciate that. All right, guys, peace. I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.